Hello, my name's Simon Carr, and welcome to my uh, YouTube channel. Um, over the next few days, I'm going to be taking you through the use of PiQT4. Um, first thing I want to show you is where you can get uh, a QT from, and there's two ways of doing it. Um, if you've already got um, Python installed, you can just go to, as you see on the screen, uh, riverbankcomputing.co.uk um, and you can download either the source packages um, for use on um, on Linux um, or on Mac OS or on Windows or if you are on Windows you can you can download the executable and install it um, and it will give you um, it will give you a start menu item um, with the QT designer in there which is what we're going to be using today the other way to get PyQt if you haven't already got Python installed or maybe it's um, a distribution of Python that you already use is using WingPython and uh, WingPython um, as its name suggests is just for Windows although there is a similar distribution called Python XY which will run on um, on Mac OS and on Linux um, personally I'm a Windows man um, and that will give you a folder wherever you decide to install it um, call WinPython and it's got the various tools which come with WinPython one of which which I found absolutely invaluable um, is the IPython notebook uh, you may well have used it if you haven't then I strongly suggest that you at least have a look at it there's plenty of videos on YouTube and you'll see that it really is um, an excellent piece of kit um, but anyway but the main thing which it comes with um, which we're interested in today is the QT designer um, so let's get started I'm just going to show you the power of using the QT designer so the first thing we'll see when we open up um, the designer is the default um, template is a main window which is what we're going to use so I'm just going to click create you see this is our the working area working canvas of our window um, like I say, this is only going to be a demo uh, initially just to show you what we can do very very quickly so I'm just going to put um, a dot widget on there and I'm going to put um, I'm going to put a button in there and a layout and I'm going to lay it out um, in fact let's yeah let's just lay out vertically for the time being it'll put the button in the middle which doesn't look great but we'll sort that out afterwards and I'll show you as we move on how we can change that and put things towards the top and in fact what I'll also do is just stick another another windows dock another dock in there and we'll put another button in there and lay it out vertically and let's put a um, I'm looking for line edit there it is let's put the line edit in there as well and then let's over here um, let's put a tab widget into here and again lay a layout for this screen behind this tab as being um, layout vertically and we can very quickly in design and see what our, um, um, our windows going to look like um, in various various looks so I'm just going to choose a Windows XP style and we can see already we've got um, we can we can expand the window we can move these around um, like you'd expect in a um, um, in a higher quality application um, move things around here put this down there what we can Double click it, we can separate it out of the window altogether, or we can drop things onto other windows and we can flip between them, such as this. Um, let's just, to make things a bit neater, let's just give these a title. So we will say, um, let's call it doc1, and we'll call this doc2, and Let's put let's put a button on each of our tabs, and again, let's put a layout vertically, and let's put a tree widget in here. Um, layout vertically. Double click in here, and we can do name. Okay, 
let's just do that. Um, let's have a look at this form. Preview in Windows XP style, and you can see it's looking slightly better. And let's close that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Eclipse and I'm going to create a new um, a new project that we can import this window into, and then play around with it, configure it, um, make it do things at runtime. So let's file new PyDev project, and we'll call it YouTube One. Finish. Okay. So now I've got that. I'm going to go into Designer and I'm going to save as. This will create something called um, a UI file. Um, so it's not a Python file um, as yet. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I'm just going to save. This is my window. If I come back into clips, I should be able to refresh this. And you can see we've got a window.ui file. Now this is actually um, an XML file which is created by uh, Qt Designer. And what we need to do is we need to get a, um, a Python file um, out of this that we can use. And one of the things which comes with PyQt4 um, is something called UIC. Um, and within WinPython, um, I think it's probably in Python lib. I might be wrong here, but let's just see site packages. And let's go to PyQt4. We should find we've got um, a PyUIC. Um, in fact, sorry. I apologize. You do you will normally have a pi uic 4.bat file in here. However, I've moved it because because um this is such a long path, it's quite difficult to, to get to it at the command prompt. So what I do is you'll find that on my C drive. I've got PyUIC 4.bat, which is uh, the file that I've moved from in here and put it on my C drive just so I can get access to it easily. So let's let's go into the workspaces and QT. Right, okay, so we can see in here we've got the window.ui file which I've created and we want to get a Python file from that. And that's very easy to do with C Pi UIC4. And we then type in the name of our UI file, which is window.ui, and then a couple of less than uh, brackets or chevrons. Um, and then we're going to call it window.py and what this will do, PyURC will then convert window.ui into a window.py file. I hit enter. Shouldn't say anything other than bring this back to a prompt. There we go. But if I now refresh Eclipse, you'll see we've now got a window.py file. If I double click on this to open it. Just the speed of my computer. I'm not sure what's going on there anyway, but here we go. So this is the file just being created. Now, one thing um, that I must stress at this point is that you don't want to be doing any coding inside of this file because you 
quite regularly you're going to want to go back to here edit your interface and then back into command prompt and change and convert UI file into a PY file again and that will overwrite this file so any code that you've put in there will be gone you'd have to do again so what we need to do is to create another Python file and import this uh, window into it uh, so we'll do that now we'll just call it main and um, to save me doing a lot of typing I actually have a shortcut which is set up um, and I'll show you how to create that in a second um, I do control um, space after I type to the first view you can see here I've created a, um, a template called QT window and if I click that it just automatically creates um, the text that I need so all that I need to now do is replace You'll see we've got a class called UI main window um, within um, our window.py file and that's what we're going to be importing. So the only thing that I've had to change there is and that um, UI dot UI underscore main window is always automatically created by the by the QT designer unless you change um, the name of the main window widget. So if we changed the main window widget from main window to I don't know my window then this will be called UI underscore my window okay so I tend to I tend to leave this the default has been UI main window however you're free to you're free to change that if you like okay so we should now be ready to go with this this should if I should be able to save this and it should just run and there we go we've now got a working application okay it doesn't do anything when we click on the buttons but we're going to sort that out very shortly and as I say we haven't had to edit directly the .py file that we created however if we want to make those buttons do something what we probably better do is let's say we want to change the text in this button to say hello world and let's call that button I tend to have a standard name and convention of buttons I always type BTN and then say hello and then in the text box um, always call them text and hello world so I'm going to save that and now go back to our DOS prompt just up arrow just repeat my last command and that is the old PY file has been overwritten let's close that and should find now if I run this there we go it's already updated the screen and we can what we want to do now I suppose is we want to attach um, a command to this button so when we click it we can we can put hello world into this text box down here so it's dead easy to do in our init function so that when the win when the uh, class um, first starts up we want to um, tell it to assign um, a signal to that um, uh, button and so what we're going to type is self UI um, dot button say hello my keyboard is wireless I'm sorry so I have to keep banging it because I think the battery is running out button say hello dot and this is a great thing with Eclipse it will give me it will auto complete and show me all the possible actions um, that we can attach to the button and one of them um, is clicked so that when the button is clicked um, we want to connect and because I don't think this is the 
um, the ideal way of um, of making connections. There is a more long-winded way of connecting an event to a something such as a button. I always use this a short way because it's so much easier. Except for it doesn't do an auto complete. So after I've done dot clicked, I say dot connect. Open brackets and then we want to self dot um, say we're going to call a function called button. Um, say hello, clicked. And a quick shortcut in if I just save this actually first, control S, shortcut in Eclipse if I press control 1, give me a little drop down here ask me what I want to do with this method and one of the things I can do is I can say I want to create um, a method at main called button say hello clicked so I'll do that and what I would like to do however is I like to put it just because I prefer it on this better convention to put it below my init function um, so when someone clicks this button say hello the button called say hello um, then this function here button say hello clicked will be run one of the things you need to know is you mustn't put open brackets like that you mustn't put brackets at the end of your function call otherwise it won't work you just put in um, just the name of the function itself and we want to put some text in that text box so we're going to go self dot ui and we call it text dot hello world and we want to set the text so let's set text and we just want to put in hello world okay so we should be able to run that now and this should work fine there we go so you can see it's, um, it's very very quick and very easy um, to run um, applications, um, sorry, to run GUI applications um, in Python. Um, very easy to set them up using the designer and actually adding methods to them. It couldn't really be an awful lot easier. Okay, so that's the end of the first video. Um, what we'll be looking at um, next. Um, in another video is I'm going to I'm going to show you how to associate um, a UI file um, in here so that when we double click on this UI file it will automatically open up in the designer so that we don't have to go into the designer click file open and then go and browse to our um, our folder that we've saved our project into we can just we can edit everything then directly from Eclipse okay so um, I'll see you in the next video thank you for listening